Welcome everyone to today's webcast. My name is Ahmed Nateg. I'm a consultant with StoryGood and I've helped multiple consumer goods companies with their BI and analytics implementations. And today we hope to share some of our experiences in the procurement space specifically. I'm also joined by my colleague Henrietta, who is part of our analytics practice, and she'll be taking you through the demos today. I'll start with a brief introduction of our company, Surrogate Associates. For those of you who don't know Surrogate, we're a global BI and analytics consultancy. We focus on business objectives and we work with various technologies to help meet those objectives. You can see a sample of our technology partnerships along the right-hand side here. We provide end-to-end -end services from helping to shape your vision and strategy through to full implementation of bespoke applications, as well as providing the training and ongoing support for these applications. So today we're going to be discussing, with the help of some demos, some ways that you can bring together and visualize disparate sources of data to form a holistic view of your procurement processes as one part of the supply chain. And the content of this webinar is going to be particularly focused on the types of data and analysis that are relevant to consumer goods manufacturers. So dealing with the regular purchase of lots of physical materials that are an input to the manufacturing processes, rather than services or other goods such as stationery. But if you are joining us from a company that works in another industry, we do think that the general ideas um, will still be of relevance to other industries. So we hope that it helps spark some ideas for you as well. So in this space, some of the key topics of interest that we're going to be covering include reporting on the performance of your suppliers, finding opportunities to improve the quality of goods or services that you're paying for, optimizing the price that you're paying for it, reporting on your warehouse inventory and delivery forecasts, and finally we'll discuss how it could benefit you to start sharing some of this data with your suppliers directly, and the kinds of considerations that need to be taken if you are going to do this. We'll be showing some demos that we've created using Microsoft Power BI's reporting solution for the purpose of this webinar. But these kinds of solutions can be made using various reporting technologies, and so the focus of our discussion will be around the data and the analysis of it, rather than any particular technology. Let's get into it. We'll start by taking a high-level look at a simplified flow of the work involved in procurement and the data sets that are involved in these. So the diagram here shows the process starting from getting a view of the demand that, that the company's got to manufacture goods. The sales department would generate forecasts of the products which they think they can sell over any given period of time. And these forecasts would be fed down to the various manufacturing plants based on factors such as the type of product. So we won't deal with this data set directly, but the sales forecast will result in a forecast of the raw materials that are required in each factory as part of the manufacturing process. The inventory of the factory would then be reviewed to get a view of what you already have and what needs to be ordered in addition. The idea is generally to try and order just the right amount to meet the demand at the right time, as there's a cost associated with holding excess stock. The procurement manager will then look to choose a supplier that's appropriate for providing the materials that you require. This involves an analysis of various metrics of the supplier, including their price, location, quality of materials, results of audits that might have been carried out, and the quality of service that's offered by that supplier. Once they've chosen the supplier, the orders are placed, which define the quantity of materials required, when the delivery is expected, what the price will be, and what the payment terms are. Of course, in reality, these orders will often be placed on a regular basis, so you might request a monthly delivery for the next two years rather than going through the full process every month. The supplier then delivers the requested goods to your factory, hopefully at the time when it was scheduled, but perhaps at a different date. And as part of the manufacturing process, the quality of these materials will be examined, recorded, and fed back to the supplier. And finally, the supplier would submit an invoice, which should then be paid within a certain amount of time based on the payment terms that would have been previously agreed. So we're looking at a large range of data sets generated by different teams, a lot of which might be held in your enterprise resource planning tools, but some of which might come externally and might be less structured. We have material consumption forecasts showing how much materials are required and when. Snapshots of the factory inventory, showing the amount of stock that you hold at any given time. Purchase orders show what's expected to be delivered by which supplier and on what day. Delivery records show whether the supplier met this criteria. 
Material quality data sets show the number of issues that were found with each of the orders and the resulting impact that they had. Contracts and specification data show the agreements with the suppliers, including the materials which you buy from them, the standard lead time expected for orders, the payment schedule, as well as the specific requirements for how the materials should be made, stored, and transported. Audit records will show whether the supplier is meeting the standards that you expect from them within their own internal processes. And finally, data from invoicing and payment systems show what the supplier was expecting to be paid and whether they were paid on time. Now, each of these data sets has a number of different dimensions and hierarchies that you'd want to analyze them against and which we'll look at in our demo soon. There's definitely going to be more in reality, but material, geography of your factories, the supplier, and of course, the time dimensions are some of the key ones. So we're now going to look at some of the key groups of people that benefit from analyzing this data and the levels at which they would want to look at it based on their roles and responsibilities. First of all, we'll look at the head office manager and the buyers. So there are differences in their role. The managers would see procurement as one segment of their role, whereas the uh, the buyers are specifically focused on that aspect and they'll be meeting with specific suppliers on a more regular basis to discuss their performance and future plans. But we've grouped them here as there's a common analogy that their analysis would be at a relatively high level. So both interested in getting a summary view of both the company's procurement processes as well as how particular suppliers are performing over a year, a quarter, or a month. They won't necessarily want to do a lot of ad hoc or detailed analysis. So a predefined and structured report with some interactivity would be most appropriate for them. They'll often be working with multiple countries or regions in terms of the factories which they buy materials for, and they'll deal with suppliers at this level as well. The managers will also probably be focused on large groups of materials such as packaging, which would mean that they work, would work with a subset of suppliers that deal with those groups of materials specifically. So before we move on to a demo for this set of use cases, we'll look at some of the key questions that these user groups will want to answer. So they'll want to ensure that the quality of goods being produced remains consistent, consistently high, and part of this involves understanding the quality of materials they're buying and whether there's reoccurring issues that need to be discussed with the suppliers to try and resolve them. They'll want to ensure that goods are being delivered on time, and if they're not, they'll be interested in knowing whether there's bottlenecks from the factory side that are preventing this, or if there's supplier issue that needs to be dealt with. And for both the quality and the delivery metrics, the buyers will want to compare the performance of various suppliers against each other. They'll be interested in the trend in their spend. Are they spending less or more than they used in the previous year? So the buyer would want to keep an eye on the suppliers that are growing in significance. If there's a supplier that they're spending an increasing amount with, they'd probably want to start collaborating more closely with them. And there might be opportunities to get better discounts as well. And for the managers, the spenders of particular interest when, you, when they compare it to their sales data set. So for example, if there's an increasing material cost, to what extent is this affecting their margins? They'll probably also have some corporate responsibility KPIs that they want to ensure they're meeting. So, for example, are the materials that they're buying coming from sustainable sources? And from the, another perspective, they'll also want to measure how well they're doing in keeping up their relationship with the supplier. For example, are they paying their invoices on time? Now I'm going to hand over to Henrietta, who's going to take you through a couple of dashboards that we've built for the head office managers and buyers. Hello, everyone. As Armand said, I'm Henrietta Gorson, and I'm also a consultant at Thoroughgood. I'm going to be showing you the demos today. The first one here is going to be of the head office managers, as Armand just described. And again, these are in Power BI. What I'm showing at the moment is Power BI online. So I'm showing some predefined dashboards that we've published. And again, we're showing this in one particular tool, but this could be used in any tool that you desire. What we have here is an overview dashboard that could be used for the managers. At the top here, we have some KPIs based on the range of data sets that Arma was just describing. In the middle, we've got some more detailed trends. And on the left-hand side, you've got some filters so you can choose which of the KPIs you want to look at in more detail. 
also the area, the geographic area, and the supplier that you're interested in. Finally, we've got a chart showing the spend by material group and comparing this to previous year. So to take you through the KPIs, we're looking at the percentage of orders which had quality issues, which would be important to track. Also have the percentage of deliveries which were given on time, and then the percentage of deliveries that were given in full. So for example, if you had ordered 100 units of a particular material, you'd want that volume to be delivered rather than 90. So this is important to track as well. Here we've given the percentage of payments which were on time, as I was just describing, and again, a percentage of the sustainability metrics that you might define within your organization. So many organizations these days have some kind of corporate responsibility, um, agenda, and targets which they're trying to meet. And as part of that, you pass on some of that responsibility to your suppliers. So you could decide on particular measures that you want to measure your suppliers against. Finally, we've got a me measure of audit compliance. And again, this would be the internal processes of your suppliers um, based on the metrics that you find important. So as a head office manager, I'd want to see all this in one go, but then also be able to look at this in more detail. So here, for example, I might be interested in looking at only supplier two, if this is someone that I work with in particular. And now we see that the charts update, and I can see the percentages only for supplier two. Now here you can see that the in-full delivery is tailing off substantially in the near future, as these spark lines are showing the trend over time. You can look at this in more detail by looking at this chart here. And you can see that, in fact, lots of this is attributed to two particular regions. So this would be something that you might notice here and then pass on to analysts to have a look at in more detail. But as a, as a manager, you'd want to have an overview of what's going on. The final line chart here describes the spend by particular material group compared to last year. And this is shown as a waterfall chart, which is a particular useful way of looking at this kind of data. You can see that the increase in spend from last year is predominantly coming from packaging. So what we can do here is drill down to get more detail on this. So this is some functionality that we've built in into the chart that we think that someone using this would find most useful. So there's some interactivity but not so much freedom as an analyst would have. Here you can see that actually lots of the increase is coming from Europe, Latin America, and North America. And again, this would be something you'd want to look into in more detail. The second dashboard I'm going to show you is looking at how so you can compare different suppliers that you have. This is particularly important if you're trying to enter some negotiations or improve your supplier performance. Again, we've got the same KPIs, but now you can compare different suppliers and compare them to the average. On the left-hand side, we can again choose the area. But say we're in charge of a global operation, and we just want to compare supplier one with supplier two. Now we can very quickly get the two metrics side by side and see what's going on. So for example, supplier two here has considerably fewer quality issues, deliver more on time, and are more sustainable. But there are some aspects where they don't perform as well in. And what you use this data for would depend on your priorities. So if you've got a very high priority product, which is very important to not have faults in, then maybe um, having a low occurrence of issues is the most important. However, this would be case dependent. Finally, another dashboard which might be included in such a set for managers would be a more detailed look at spend. Again, we've got some filters here on the left-hand side. The top chart here is looking at the total spend and how it splits out depending on the metrics we're using. The second chart is looking at the cost per unit for each material. Now, as we noticed in the first dashboard, there's an increase in spend partly coming from North America. So I've selected that filter here. Now, for example, I might be interested in looking at procurement team four, 
as that's the one that I'm working with. So now we see this large area here of spend coming from packaging, and we want to work out what's going on here. So we can drill down to give more detail. And we can see that it's split by the two suppliers, not too dissimilarly. Here we can see the different materials and how much they cost. If we look at the most expensive material here, it is above average. We can drill down to see how this compares between the two suppliers. Now what we see is that the most expensive material is actually more expensive from supplier two than supplier one. So if we're looking to reduce costs here, we could split, uh, switch to supplier one. But remember all the other metrics that we're taking into consideration, this would be something that would have to be evaluated internally and see whether switching to a lower cost supplier would be worth the change in performance across the different areas. I'm now going to pass back to Ahmed for a few more notes on other use cases before returning to more demos. Thanks, Henrietta. So what we saw there was an example of how all these different data sets can be brought together to give the head office managers and a high level view of performance and how a buyer can focus on the data that's relevant to them and drill down a bit more to analyze the data. Next, we're going to take a look at the manufacturing site or factory manager. They're going to need to have access to a detailed level of data as they're involved in the day-to-day -day processes of making sure their factory runs well, and they need to know if there's any immediate risks to, for example, their stock levels or quality. Although a factory might only produce a certain category of products, the materials they need to use will probably come from a large range of material groups, and so they'll be dealing with a large range of suppliers as well. Some of the key metrics that they would be interested in are around their stock data, their demand forecasts, and the planned future deliveries. So they'll want to make sure that they're not holding too much stock at any given time. This can be measured in terms of the value of the materials that they're holding, perhaps compared to the amount that they spend over a given time. But what might be of more interest is a measure of the stock on hand days, so to ensure that they're not holding more than they need. So this can be calculated by looking at the past consumption data and comparing it to the current stock quantity to get a view of how many days the stock will probably last them. For example, if they've got 10,000 boxes and they've used up 5,000 in the last week, then they've roughly got enough stock for two weeks based on the recent usage patterns. On the other hand, they also want to make sure they have enough to cover the future demand. So they can do a more detailed comparison of their future, future weekly orders against their predicted weekly consumption to see if there's any gaps, meaning that they need to place more orders for a particular week. As with previous user groups, they'll be interested in monitoring the quality of goods and service they're receiving, as well as identifying the suppliers that are causing them issues. They'll also want to look in more detail at the delivery records to see if there are bottlenecks from their own side which might be causing delays. For example, if the warehouse is becoming too full and isn't able to take in all the orders that they placed at the time that they wanted. Now I'm going to hand over back to Henrietta, who's going to take you through a demo of a report that we've built for the factory manager. Thanks, Ahmed. So again, I'm back on PowerBI.com and looking at one of the our more static reports for the factory manager. So this would be a generic report that you could produce for any factory manager and you could choose, so each one could choose where you are. So for example, I might be a factory manager in Europe and here I get a selection for the factory that I'm managing. We're now looking at the amount of stock on hand. So that would be the amount of stock that you currently have in your warehouses. And obviously you wouldn't want to be running out of stock because then you would be losing money in sales. And on the other hand, you wouldn't want to be stocking too much as that would be expensive. So optimizing your stock on hand is actually quite an important issue. We're now looking at the stock on hand here at the top by different material groups. The middle chart is showing the deliveries versus the stock quantity. So the bars here are the deliveries and the black line is the stock quantity. And the bottom chart here is showing the predicted consumption and demand uh, versus the orders placed. So you'd have 
say, statistical team or analysts working out what expected demand would be and then making sure that the orders are placed to match this. So now I might be interested in looking at, just on a daily basis, looking at how much stock I have from each material group. And now I see that actually we have a considerable amount of stock for material group 9. can look at this in more detail by drilling down. And here I see that material type 19 is where most of this increase is coming from. So let's drill down on again. Now we have each individual material detail, so you can see in loads of detail which one is the one with too much stock. And it was useful having the levels of the hierarchy there, um, because if you have a large factory, then you wouldn't want to be looking at the entire list of, of materials, as this would be too long. And we can see here the material 13857 has, over, has nearly a thousand days worth of stock on hand, so there's clearly something going on here. If I click on this, the other charts will filter down to only show the data to this particular material. Here we see the particular deliveries and the stock quantity, but this lower chart here shows that actually the forecast of demand is only for November, December, and January, so this is really a highly seasonal product. However, we're still getting deliveries throughout the year, so that's re uh, resulting in a really high amount of stock that we're holding. So this is clearly an issue that we've got in our ordering process, so I'd be able to pass this on to my, um, my sourcing team within the factory to make sure that we're only ordering the material that we actually need at the time that we need. So this is just a quick demonstration of how you could use some kind of stock dashboard as a manager to find out what's going on within your factory. Go pass back to Armin now for a couple of final use cases. Thanks, Anita. So the next set of demos that we're going to look at are going to be centered around supply chain analysts. Now, this is a broad term we're using here that encompasses the kinds of people who are going to be analyzing the data in even more detail and are going to be looking to find patterns, trends, or anomalies and to investigate issues that have been flagged to them from a higher level. So they'll need access to the data at the most granular level and they'll want the flexibility to shape the data themselves in a way that will let them explore and investigate it. So the analysts we'll be looking at some of the same kinds of data sets we've already seen, but their focus is more on specific risks and opportunities as opposed to high-level performance. They'll be looking at the quality and delivery data sets to try and find any patterns that might exist. For example, there might be a particular material that's not being delivered fully in particular months across all factories, and that might be due to seasonal issues relating to the production of that material. Once they identify that, then the buyer might work to mitigate this risk by dealing with a larger range of suppliers. They can analyze the differences in service at a detailed level to identify where specifically they can get better service if they were to switch suppliers. There may, for example, be a supplier that shows a strong performance at a high level, but when looking at a certain type of material, there are other suppliers that provide a better quality. There may be opportunities to reduce costs. If they can put a cost against the issues that they're facing, in terms of the impact on production issues, it might turn out that overall it would be more cost efficient if they were to move to another more reliable supplier that might have a slightly higher cost price. Particular types of analysts focused on finance will need to do regular checks to ensure that their suppliers are correctly invoicing them. So they'll be comparing the invoices to the purchase orders and the records of their delivery. Other analysts more focused on logistics will want to analyze the locations of suppliers and their factories to see if they make sense. And in some cases, there might even be opportunities to save money and improve service by identifying where they can be moving materials around internally to make the best use of them rather than procuring them externally. I'm going to hand over back to Henrietta, who will now take you through a couple of demos, one around deep diving into issues, and another about sourcing goods internally. Thank you, Ahmed. So as you can see, I'm now moving into Power BI desktop. So as an analyst, I would want more access to the data here. As you can see here, we've got some more options to interact with your data, as well as options to change your visualizations and all the data that's available to us. So. I've got two charts here. 
One of them is a line chart, very similar to the one that we had on the first dashboard I showed you. So that's, uh, that's one I've just taken from there and filtered down to only show the one metric we're interested in here, in this case, quality issues. And this shows that as an analyst, I can take the dashboards that are public, uh, publicly available, say, to my managers and interact with them just how I like. The top one here shows the number of quality issues, and I'm going to be interacting with this to look at what's going on. So I've been told by my manager says that there is an issue with the average number of quality issues per order, and that there's a peak in July, and we're wondering why that's happened. So now I'm going to be looking at the differences here within, within the quality issues split by material group, because in my experience, that could be something that can affect the quality issues. It's dragged the material group on. And now it filters down to only show, show splits by material group. And we can see that most of the issues are occurring in material group nine. So there's a bit of a peak there, but actually it's much lower. The axis has changed. So actually most of them are occurring in material group nine here. So in my experience, I also know that the supplier can impact the quality issues um, because some processes are better and some suppliers. So I'm going to be using that one as well. So pull this down underneath. And then for future use, I'll be bringing in material as well. So I'll want to look at that. So now I've pulled these additional measures onto uh, the group, which means I can drill down on my chart. So we can now drill down to see the split by supplier. And actually, most of the issues are coming from supplier one. So let's drill down and look at the material again in more detail. And we can see that the majority of the issues here are, in fact, from this one particular material from supplier one. Looking at the other segments, there's not really that much going on. The majority of it is, in fact, coming from this one particular material. So I've really quickly been able to take the visualizations that we had on the main dashboard, change them, and quickly find some insight to, that I'm able to pass on to the managers. The final demo that I'm going to show is, as Ahmed mentioned, how you can work with internal processes to make some savings. So what, like, what we're looking at here are the potential savings you can make from moving surplus stock from one factory to another. So for example, particular factories might have over-ordered over or the production hasn't quite been what they expected, so they've ended up with a surplus. Similarly, other, other factories might end up with a deficit. So what we're looking at here is the potential savings by moving stock from one factory to another rather than buying it from another supplier. Factoring in transport costs. So here we've got some filters so I can have a look at how this varies across the different material groups. And again, I can have a look at the different categories and interact with this chart. More usefully is to actually look at the location of my factories and see where I can move stocks that, that I need. So for example, I might be a manager at plant 103, and I have some surplus material. Now this visualization shows really quickly which factories I could send this to to make a saving for the company overall. I can have a look here at the estimated transport time and the opportunity cost. So we can see the opportunity save, value savings. So we can see that actually sending to any of these would save a lot of money because presumably their needs are greater than the amount that I have here. So this is a really powerful tool to allow you to make some savings internally without having to buy more materials. Another way of looking at this is through a thank you diagram. So here I selected, for example, I'm a manager at a destination unit, so I, I need materials. Now I can really quickly see which plants have the material at hand or in their surplus that I can contact to order from. I can similarly filter down by only the materials I'm interested in. 
so I see exactly which plant I should contact to get that material. And as mentioned, this kind of analysis is really powerful for letting you make some savings internally and identifying opportunities. Again, this kind of dashboard can be published to managers so you can use them. However, I'm showing this in desktop mode now just to show how an analyst can interact with it as well. So that's all from me. I'll pass back to Armin now for some final remarks. Thanks. Finally, we're going to briefly discuss the opportunity that there is to host a collaboration space to share some of this information with suppliers. A lot of the metrics we've looked at so far could help your suppliers improve their service if they had immediate access to it, and by being open, it can also help you improve your relationship with them. So if you share this information with them, they can review the details behind the stats that you have about them, and if there's any issues with your data, they can help flag them so you can resolve them in the future. And even if there aren't issues, the transparency gives them assurance that you're being fair with them. They can also get a better view of your expectations of them. If they can see and report what your targets are or how they rank amongst other suppliers, then it helps them understand you better and ensure that you're aligned. By having access to this data, they can also be more proactive about identifying areas for improvement, as well as analyzing the root causes of any issues that there are so they can resolve them. And if you do choose to share data about your future material demand forecasts, it can help to flag to them where they might need to prepare for a ramp up in production. And finally, by sharing your requirement specifications in this collaborative platform, it helps to ensure that your supplier has access to the latest requirements. They can provide comments on it, and they can use it to bring their production process in line. There are some considerations that need to be taken if you are going to give suppliers direct access to this data. So from an architecture perspective, you probably don't want external users to be coming into your internal network and systems. So the system that they use would have to be isolated on an extranet or an external network that's available through the internet with the appropriate security measures to avoid other unwanted users from accessing it. This is a use case where you might want to consider a cloud platform to ensure that your internal networks are safeguarded, but also to help manage the authentication of users. For example, with Microsoft's Azure, Azure platform, suppliers can log into your system using their own company's credentials, so you don't have to create accounts for them within your network. There also needs to be some thought about how to link some of your internal data to supplier dimension if it doesn't naturally have that. For example, the data from your factories about the inventory won't be against a particular supplier, but you could use contracts or historical spend data to allocate this proportionally across suppliers. You'll also want to consider the scope of data that you make available. Some data might be particularly sensitive, which you wouldn't want to share at all. For example, some of the details of your warehouses. And for most of the data, you would want to restrict it, by dy restrict it dynamically based on the user, such, uh, so that suppliers can only see data relates to their own company and not of their competitors. So that's all we had for today. So thank you, and if you've got any questions, um, feel free to reach out to myself or Henrietta, and we'll come back to you as soon as we can. Thank you.